have been Spotify for five years now. I want my profile to be a strategist. I think the harder part for me, especially as an introvert, is on driving and proposing ideas. Instead of thinking you're proposing things, think of it as you're inspiring the team. The most important thing that you can do as a PM to ensure the success of a project is Hi, I'm Lillian and I'm the Business Strategy and Operations Manager here at Spotify in New York City. Welcome to the first episode of Coffee Chat with Lillian. And this is actually one of the rooms in the New York City office. But yeah, this will be our cozy corner where we get to sit down. No flashy visuals or graphics, just my honest thoughts on life and work from my heart directly to yours. I'm also so fortunate to be surrounded by inspiring individuals in my personal life and in my work life. So you might also see some of them join me for our coffee chats here. And let's dive into our coffee chat. For our first episode, I have here with me Rodolfo. He is a senior product manager at Spotify and he's someone who I look up to a lot at work. I always feel so inspired whenever I work with him. So yeah, I thought I'll have him here to share with us what it's like to be a product manager and some of his insights having been in this field for how long? Five years? Longer. Wow, really? Right. Like seven years? Seven years? Yeah. Wow, okay. I'll let Rodolfo introduce himself. Lillian, thanks again so much for having me here. And it's a pleasure to be here in front of all of you. As Lillian mentioned, I'm a senior product manager at Spotify and I currently lead an engineering team whose job is to build delightful experiences that make people excited to come to Spotify and talk about it with their friends and family. The most prominent feature that we've launched is the daylist feature that many of you have seen, but we also support many of the different in-app marketing campaigns and experiences that you might have seen, like for example, Playlist in a Bottle, or the My Top 5 series. I love the day list. It's so, I feel like it really knows me more than I do myself. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you think, because we've only met for what, two months? Right? Uh, do you think I'm an introvert or extrovert? So like you act like an extrovert, but I think you're an introvert or an extroverted that, that, introvert. Actually, you're, that, that's really true. Yeah. Like you're very good at reading. That's why like you like, you're okay with this because you pre-record it and you like curate it. So you're yeah. not put on the spot. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Like if you put me like on the spot to talk right away, like I can't. Like, I'm the opposite. If I have to think things too much, then I get more nervous. If you put me on the spot and just get it done, it's like boom. Mm. The reason why I'm asking you is because, so for this video, I want to share like how to network and socialize in the office okay. as an introvert. You find yeah. extroverts like me. So are you an extrovert or uh, extrovert? I'm an extrovert. But you don't, I don't know. I feel like you're like, you could be extroverted, but you are, you also have your introvert side. Yeah, because I'm very introspective compared to most mm, extroverted people. Yeah. No. Do you think that's most of the case for PMs, like character-wise? You get a full spectrum. There's like introverted PMs and extroverted PMs, yeah. and that just dictates how they lead teams. How do you lead your team? Like, how, what's your leadership style? So I'm like very charismatic, and my like strengths as a PM are about motivating teams and aligning mm -hmm. with other teams. Versus mm -hmm. I feel like other PMs I've worked with that are more introspective, like for example for Daylist, there's two PMs that worked on Daylist, mm -hmm. myself and the other PMs. She is more introverted than I am, mm -hmm. and I feel like she brings a lot more calm and detail mm -hmm. to our meetings and our explorations. Well, you got put on a new project, yeah. right? And, like you have all these stakeholders that you haven't talked to before. Yeah. Like, what do you do to make sure they want to work with you? The most important thing that you can do as a PM to ensure the success of a project is making sure that everyone feels comfortable and that the work that they're doing is helping them achieve their goals as a team and their individual development goals. And how you do that is by establishing strong relationships with your internal team and the external team. Your question is more about like other teams that you're working with. And in that case, like, you want to form a relationship with those people so that there's trust. Mm -hmm. Trust is the most important thing that leads to the success of any project that involves multiple teams. When you work on, work on things that are very small, you don't need that much trust because you can do it individually with, like, a small group of people. But bigger initiatives, like the stuff that we are working on, the new yeah. products that we're working on that touch on a whole region, mm -hmm. those require each stakeholder, or at least, like, the leads in that project, to have a lot of faith in the people who are leading that project and the long-term vision for it. The mm -hmm. easiest way for a project to fail is people getting mad at each other or at least getting mad at each other because they don't understand each other. Mm -hmm. And misunderstandings are way more easily prevented with earlier and more frequent conversations. And you don't mm -hmm. want to talk to people you don't like. 
that's like if you like someone you're gonna want to talk to them right so you solve these things before they they balloon it's like the concept mm. of like a snowball that it becomes a snowman and becomes bigger and bigger as you roll it mm. i love that so you talked about the concept of trust and yeah. also kind of working your way and so that people like working with you yeah. and like you know talking to you etc but like do you have any concrete example or like tips for the audience like how do you actually build trust? Because I feel like trust is a very subjective, like hard. Soft and hard things you can do to build trust. Mm -hmm. The soft piece that I think is really important is the first thing you should always do is um, meet with a person. Like mm -hmm. you need to form a one-to-one -one relationship with the people you're going to be working with closest. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be an intense meeting. It can be 15 minutes where it's just you introduce yourself, you introduce what your team is trying to do, and you ask them about themselves, what their team is trying to do, what their goals are, mm -hmm. and that personal trust yeah, sorry, that personal touch builds trust or it builds the beginning of a relationship. If you're going to be working with someone regularly, I think it's important to have regular check-ins, mm -hmm. like a weekly or bi-weekly meeting with that person mm -hmm. where you can touch on business outcomes or business goals, or you can just do things like catch up and grab a coffee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes lead to conversations once you've been working for a while with a person about long-term opportunities and bigger things that you can do in your collaboration. Mm -hmm. The more tactical thing about building trust is when it comes to workplace or like the harder thing you can do like soft yeah. things like relationships and just mm -hmm. someone like you and hard things like outcomes and outputs the easiest thing is promise to do something and deliver on it right that's totally. like that's like the foundation of trust if someone likes you as a person and they see you delivering on the thing that you're promising yeah things are good I think that also applies to life in general, like yeah. how you build trust. As exactly. I realized from working with you on like this new product, we're yeah. launching, I can't say too much, but... Uh, Classified. Yeah, we'll get PR flag. What I've noticed working with you is that like, you ask a lot of questions in meetings. Mm -hmm. And instead of you trying to dictate the conversation or tell people what to do, you're actually very good at probing it out of mm -hmm. people in the room to then feel like, oh, well, I, I'm really excited about this project. Like, mm -hmm. I like how, you know, Rodolfo is listening to me and it's not like he's managing me. Yeah. Do you think that's also part of building trust? It's like not saying too much, but being able to be like a good listener. There's two answers to that question. One piece is I think any good conversation or meeting shouldn't be about like you imposing your point of view. Mm -hmm. If the leader of the conversation, the person that sets it up, it's about setting up the infrastructure or architecture for a good conversation. Yeah. So that's why whenever you have a meeting with me, it's like very clear agenda, very mm -hmm. clear materials, very clear outcomes that we want out of people. And once that infrastructure or architecture is set up, then people feel more empowered to do what they need to do in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. I like the word empowering. Exactly. Because if you tell people too much, then they can't do, do the stuff. And then that's right. like the second part of it. Like once you set up the architecture for it, people feel comfortable. It's really important, especially when you work with people who are more introverted. Because mm. they don't feel like they have... I think a lot of extroverted people just want to talk and get their things out there. Oh. Versus more introverted people when there is like a clear task or ask being yeah. given to them, they are more likely to be part of the conversation. That's another reason why I ask questions in meetings and sometimes mm -hmm. ask questions to individual people yeah. who I know might have a point of view. Yeah. And then the second piece to your point is like feeling empowered is about you making a decision for yourself because you believe in something, not being told that something is important and being told to do that. You said it so well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Wow. I feel that too. Like as an employee, it's like when people tell me how to do things that I'm not as, ex as excited yeah. but versus like you know if you tell me like you know we what we could do what the vision is mm. and I see it then I'm like oh wow I feel energized exactly yeah exactly it's about like believing in something bigger but it's just like a basic humanity thing where we need purpose in life and meaning for so many years like work is how people got purpose or being part of family etc and like now I feel like our generation cares a lot more about the work that they're doing being meaningful in different parts of their mm. life. So that's why I think it's also really important to make people feel empowered in their work. Because if someone isn't empowered in a project that you're doing with them at work, they're not going to put in 100% and they're going to look for other ways to find meaning. That's true. Yeah. It's re interesting. I want to wrap this, wrap up the conversation by saying like, I think there's always this misconception like, oh, to be successful at work or maybe even as a PM, you have to be extroverted. Like you have to have a strong voice mm. or you need to know like leadership, like yeah. you need to show up a certain way. But from what, what you just said, it feels like it's not only just about that. Like you can mm. succeed in your role, even as a PM, even if you're an introvert. Yeah. Like as, as long as you know, you know how to build trust, how to listen, how to be introspective, yeah. like how, how, how to communicate 
well how to deliver on things that you promise. So yeah. it's not really about like the extrovert or introvert. It's about like what you bring yeah. and how you make people feel. There's different strengths that people have and you just have to leverage them. Like I think like, again, as a PM, I think the most important thing for success in working with other partners is just setting up that architecture. And whether you're extrovert or introverted, it doesn't really matter. It's knowing yeah. how to set that up. And honestly, I feel like being an extrovert sometimes works against me because I want to talk more than I need to. Yeah. I'm really excited to announce that I'll be launching a new course with Rodolfo later this year, all about how to become that top 1% at work and applying product management principles to your work life to help you achieve your personal growth and your career growth. And he'll be sharing his experiences and techniques he's used at Meta, at Reddit, also at Spotify, and also some of the techniques he's learned from his Harvard MBA. I, of course, will be in it and sharing my thoughts and my secrets there as well. So if you're interested, you can fill out the survey in the description box and you'll get a discount code to your email when the course launches later. But actually, personal question. Now, so I know you know I have like my online course and everything. Yeah. I run like a small team. And when you said building the architecture so people can work, I have a question for you on that. It's like, I think when I have a team, when I sell the architecture, then I feel like I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I joke that I don't do work once, like right. that everyone else does the other work. The other joke I made is I'm not that smart and that's why I'm like really good at getting other people to do work. Yeah. Um, I think what happens at that point, it's actually like you've, you've achieved like peak success. Everyone is, you've set up, the fact that you don't have to do anything means that you have set up everyone to do their best work. So you don't need to jump in to do things. Um. And what that unlocks is the opportunity for you to do something else. So in my case, for example, mm -hmm. like I'm not doing that much for Dayless right now because we already launched it and we're looking at incremental improvements and things, but like, I don't need to be putting in more time. It's more important for me to take a step back and think of like, okay, uh, my team achieved this awesome thing. Yeah. Like what are like the things that I can do to help the team grow in other ways? Like what are other opportunities that we should be looking at? and just like let the team operate. And there's like other things that we're working on right now that the engineers are actively building. And it's like the concept of like too many cooks in the kitchen. The kitchen is working. I don't need to be there. What I need to figure out is like, what's the next restaurant to open or how do I expand the restaurant? I love that analogy. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> well, thank you for- No, yeah, thank you for yeah, having uh, me. This yeah, is awesome. You're actually really good at this. You're much better. I was actually nervous. Like, oh, I was like yeah, stiff. I was, I was oh, blushing. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Like, I, this conversation. No, I was like, do I need to look at the camera or like look at you? Like, Wait, I hope I'm not out of frame. I did this. I don't know if I'm out of frame. Like, uh, I know you look great, but you should really start your content. Dude, you should start content. <laughs> this inspired me. I was talking to Rodolfo in our conversation earlier. I felt really inspired. I also wanted to share some of my thoughts on this episode. To be honest, when I was filming it and just hearing my coworker talk, it just reminds me of so many things that I've been thinking about at work. I have been at Spotify for five years now and I started as an intern. A lot of you guys know about my internship videos and went from intern to analyst to manager and now I'm progressing my way to become more senior. It's interesting because as I become more senior, there's this mindset of thinking about how do I influence without authority? How do I lead? How do I drive impact at work? Recently, I also have been doing some leadership training at Spotify, and it's mainly for like mid-level managers who are not necessarily people managers, but can be influential and impactful in the work that they do. So it's like a whole application process and like apparently it's kind of competitive, but I was so glad I went through it. It's a four day program, 20 hours of training, and I talked a lot about it in my last video, some of the skills I've learned, like the push versus pull mindset. I think the harder part for me, especially as an introvert, is on driving and proposing ideas. I've learned this new technique of, instead of thinking you're proposing things, think of it as you're inspiring the team. So instead of saying, I think we should do the analysis using SQL, I frame it as, I wonder if we can do our analysis with SQL. I know it's a lot easier. We often use SQL in our day-to-day. -day, so I don't know, what do you guys think? It feels more suggestive, but at the same time, I'm also proposing the idea in people. The golden cash phrase is, I wonder, or I'm curious though, what if we try SQL? So one of the things I've learned about building trust and also how to drive an effective meeting is being a good listener, but at the same time, be an inspirer. For me, being a good listener is about understanding where that person is coming from and also what 
could be their intention or motives behind what they're saying. So for me, I tend to listen on the keywords. Like let's say, oh, I think we should do it this way because the US has done a similar study. Then I'll probe a little bit like, so you mentioned about the US study. What about it that stood out to you? Is there anything we can learn from the US study? It drives the conversation forward, but at the same time, it also shows that you're listening to them. Another way I do it is also on summarizing. When someone said an idea, instead of just jumping into my idea, I will say, so Rodolfo, based on what you just said, just so that I'm clear, it sounds like you wanted to blah, 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 blah. And that way it builds that reaffirmation for people and it also like indirectly builds trust. Another technique of active listening is also just in the action itself, like especially in the virtual context, you want to be looking at the camera, be nodding, or you can use your body language. A lot of times when someone says something really good, I would be like, and people can see me, you know, just like doing a thumb up. It just brings that energy to the room. And I've gotten so many compliments. Lillian, you have this like really light and bouncy energy. You bring this good energy to the room. Don't undermine your body language and how you show up physically as well. Also, one more thing is whenever someone is saying something, I take the initiative to just present my screen and start typing the notes. So it shows to the room that, hey, I'm capturing your ideas, your voice matter, and I'm taking notes of it. That way we also have an action item to go off of. So like we have some type of documentation to work off of instead of like, okay, we talk a lot about everything, but what, what do we do next, right? The other part about driving a good meeting and especially working with stakeholders you haven't met before is to always have this next step at the end of the meeting. Let's say we finished going through our list of agenda in the meeting. I always say at the end, like, all right, so in terms of next step, it sounds like we wanna blah, 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 blah. So I'll have a list of next step to recap on. And that way we leave the meeting room feeling like we've accomplished something, this was productive, and there's actually like action items for us. I don't know if I've shared it with you guys yet, but at Spotify, our culture is really like promoting us to drive our own development. So it's on me to figure out like, hey, like what's next for me? What type of profile do I want to go for? Because when we talk about business strategy and operations, you can go so many ways. You can do strategy, you can do only operations, or you can have this type of like data scientist profile. It's so broad, so it's on me to define what that next role means for me. I recently had my development talk, like my mid-year review with my manager, and I told him that for me, I want my profile to be a strategist. So a strategist, as in someone who provides clarity on what type of business objectives should we pursue. Also, what type of business opportunities are there? And from there, figuring out which team should we work with? What's the way of working? We make people collaborate from a cross-functional point of view. And then when we work together, how do I infuse that data thinking and also business mindset in how they do things? So in a nutshell, it feels like a strategic advisor or like a business consultant almost. I don't own specific things, but I do influence the way things will be done or like how we will achieve our goals as, as a team. And that's really aligned with kind of my long-term plan of being more influential on the team and people front versus like on the market level or like project level. So because of this new profile I've set for myself, I think the key word for me is influencing with the authority without a without managing people under me without a team without real ownership how do i drive an influence in the way we do things or in the projects that we deliver around me and that leads to me often like talking to a lot of teams meeting new people asking people to do things for us or like how can we leverage resources right so for me i think a lot about like how do I want people to feel when they work with me? Like when they have Lily in the room, how do they want to feel about that? And for me, I kind of visualize it because I'm a visual person. So I want them to feel like by having Lillian, it feels comfortable. It feels like even though the work is hard, but somehow it feels easy, it feels light and they have this sense of clarity. They know what to do next or they can think it through better. So yeah, that's 
kind of the leadership style that I have been thinking about. And I actually shared this with my manager's manager. And she's also someone like me. She's like such a girl boss, like boss woman, been a Spotify for 10 years. I hope I can get her on this podcast maybe one day. She's all about like influencing with authority. Like somehow when you talk to her, she makes you feel so inspired and so motivated that you actually end up doing more work. Obviously it's productive, it's good work, but she does it in a way that's so natural and like it really uplifts you from the ground up. I don't know how to describe it, but she recommended me this book called How to Lead When You're Not in Charge. I've been reading it and I really like it because it teaches me that like, hey, you don't have to wait for authority to come to you to then start influencing or start making your voices heard. So that's it for today. Thank you all for joining my first episode of Coffee Chat with Lillian. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and Coffee Chat with Lillian is also available as podcast on Spotify and Apple. Just search Coffee Chat with Lillian. So find me there as well if you want to hear my voice during your commute or wherever you're tuning in from. Thank you everyone. Have a great and amazing day. And as a reminder, you're doing great. If you can think it, you can do it. And I'm so proud of you.